I've known about Goodnight Pun Pun for a long time. It's an infamous manga series that if you are into the medium, you will 100% have heard of. I knew it was known to be a depressing and life-changing series. That's what it's mainly known for. I held it off for a while because I wanted to read other manga before diving into something this well-loved. I sort of wanted to save the best for last. And when I finally did start reading it, I expected it to change my life. I expected it to be unlike anything I've ever read. That it was. Goodnight Pun Pun was a very different read, yet it was one of the greatest things I've read in my entire life. 100% without question. Goodnight Pun Pun is a coming of age story, if you can even call it that, except in the darkest and most horrifying way imaginable. Some of the things that happen in this story are not only brutally realistic, but they are brutally portrayed to you. So it's even more brutally realistic. The main character, Pun Pun Onodera, is a kid who grows up as an only child with a drunk father and a mentally ill mother. At this point, you can probably tell where the story is going to go. The main premise of this story is seeing Pun Pun maturing and growing, and as we get to see him grow and develop into the person that he becomes at the end of the story, a lot changes, and we get to learn a lot about both the world and the character of Pun Pun alongside a few other characters on the side. But best believe the main focus is on Pun Pun. I have never in my life seen a story better illustrate the dark horrors and realism of this world than Goodnight Pun Pun. Some of the NPC characters look kind of goofy, but the whole feeling of the story and the way the art is designed, the structuring of the panels, and the dialogue. The dialogue is... Uh, it's, it's so well done for the story that Pun Pun is, and it can only be done in a story like this. The main character, we don't really see him using that typical text box that we see in manga. It's more so a certain frame in a panel is used to display what the main character, Pun Pun, is saying. Besides that, the artwork just complements the style of the story very well. Just like Berserk's extremely detailed artwork complements his very detailed narrative and fantasy-like world. I would say this story's biggest theme is change, but I wouldn't say it's change like other stories, being for example Berserk or Vagabond. The change that occurs in Goodnight Pun Pun is completely different to Berserk or Vagabond, where those two stories would be developmental changes, becoming a better person through struggle and sacrifice but goodnight pun pun is completely different it's not about becoming a better person it's about how the world affects you and how one can become a different person because of the world around them and pun pun onodera embodies this absolutely flawlessly now i will say going into goodnight pun pun i expected this story to make me completely depressed and just not want to live life for like the first three days after reading it but that wasn't actually the case for me personally it wasn't the depressing moments that really hit me hard a lot of things did hit me hard i got pretty emotional but that's a given with most mature and tragic series so it wasn't anything that out of my comfort zone personally but there is some stories out there where when i I read it I have this nostalgic feeling towards it I have this feeling towards it that yes I just read a story that I'm never going to get to read again in my entire life this was a one-of-a-kind story that I'm never going to get to experience again and goodnight Pun Pun best believe was one of those stories when I finished it I was genuinely thinking about it for the days after. It was something where as I went back and recalled the previous panels and the previous moments, the story only got better and better for me and that's how you know you have a special series. When the panels, when the moments, when the dialogue resonates with the reader and it did with me in Goodnight Pun Pun. What I really love is the coming of age, growing up. I love stories about growing up. I love stories that start out with the child and then end up with the adult and grown up version of that main character. I also love stories that start off with the main character older, but we get backstories on them. But the point is, it's this sort of nostalgic feeling I get from having this character being built up from the beginning, truly getting to see the experiences they go through. And as they go through the experiences, we sort of also go through those experiences very very subtly as well. I just thought it was truly a brilliant narrative and a beautiful story in the darkest possible way. The harsh reality of growing up in Goodnight Pun Pun hit me so hard. That was one of the things that I really did feel emotional towards. 
just seeing these characters growing up and experiencing these traumatic things the things Punpun Pun goes through are wow I mean it's a given in a story like Goodnight Punpun Pun, but it just hurts seeing such a young innocent child be forced onto so many dark things into so many mental health issues and trying to recover from that and falling into nihilism and being suicidal like these things are serious ass topics and I think that's why this story resonates so much with a lot of people because of this realistic style of writing because a lot of people sadly enough have actually experienced this on their own this isn't a story where you're supposed to follow the themes of the story where you're supposed to become a better person to never give up because the main character does something like that you're already like the main character you're not trying to become like the main character you're already like them Think about that for a second, because if you are already like that main character and you see the potential direction that you could go in your life through this character who does go in that direction, you can make change in your life to stop that from happening. There's this beautiful analogy in the story about shooting stars in the night sky. And man, I think even talking about it is going to get me a little bit emotional. But when Pun Pun was a child, he'd look up through a telescope and see stars. He'd always want to be an astronaut. And things happen later on in the story. But basically, these stars might not have actually been there. In the night sky, if you look up in the sky, you pretty much just see regular stars. When Pun Pun was a child, he saw more than just that. He believed there was more out there, more than just a few stars. There was a whole galaxy. There were hundreds, thousands, millions of galaxies out there that he could see through that telescope of his. But as he gets older, as he learns things about the world around him, and he looks up at the sky, he only sees the stars. His belief, his passion, everything he lived for is gone because of the world around him. Because the pressure forced onto him by his experiences took away all of his hope, all of his belief in life. This can only happen because of Pun Pun's freedom. He can only see these stars in the night sky despite them not even being there because of his freedom to believe but as he continues again he loses that freedom he, he becomes encaged into society and can no longer see something that is not there through his imagination another part of this story that is absolutely fascinating is the idea of god i love when stories implement god into their stories berserk does it vagabond does it in different ways Pun Pun does it. These are some of my favorite stories of all time. They implement the idea of God into the story. The way Goodnight Pun Pun does it is obviously very dark if you have not gotten the point of this video already. One can become engulfed in the idea of God and it may force them to live their lives a certain way. In Goodnight Pun Pun, the Afro God is the most prominent example of this as it shows up in Pun Pun's mind all the time when he chants a specific phrase. But that God is not the God you envision. When people think of God, they think of an almighty father but that's not what it is in this story instead it's that voice in the back of his head that's telling him he's pathetic that's pointing out his flaws despite the fact that he has many good things about himself and because of this voice he continues to ignore the things that are good about himself and that's part of the reason why he falls so deep into hell we all have this voice inside of our head and for a lot of us this voice does criticize us it does put us down and carl jung described it as the shadow so realistic so fascinating and as you can probably see this series is brutally realistic as i've mentioned many times already in the video and it serves its purpose in showing us the reality of these mental health problems in our own daily lives through this fiction character. Now Pun Pun as a protagonist, what do you think I'm going to say about the main character of a story I regard as to be one of the best things I've ever seen? Obviously, he's going to be absolutely phenomenal. He is undoubtedly one of the best developed characters I've ever seen. That's not even close. He's seriously up there as one of the best developed characters. And while there are some things that can be off-putting about his character, I think that development and the change and the realism behind his character, the psychology, the depth, everything is too good not to consider when ranking his character. Yes, he's kind of stupid. Yes, he's kind of weak, very weak. But the majority of people in this day are a lot like Pun Pun. And I think that's part of his character. That's why he is the way he is because of his own experiences. Again, his development isn't one of improvement, but it's one of deterioration. As you probably know, he's represented as the bird because in pretty much every Goodnight Pun Pun thumbnail, he's shown like this because he's pretty much shown like this for I'd say 85% of the story. But 85% is not 100%, meaning 
Pun Pun changes throughout the story. His appearance changes throughout the story. He's not always this bird throughout the story. In fact, towards the end, he adopts a new appearance. I'm not going to get into that. That's probably the worst spoiler I can give you. The way Pun Pun looks at the beginning of the story to the end is insane. The way his character is, the way he responds to certain moments is insane from the beginning compared to the end. And when you finish the story and think back to who Pun Pun was at the beginning, you will understand what I'm saying here. Now, there are obviously side characters in the story that are phenomenal as well, because there can be great stories with a phenomenal protagonist and pretty mid characters aside from the protagonist, <coughs> Code Gia. but Pun Pun is not an example of that. In fact, there are so many great side characters in the story that do sort of resemble Pun Pun, but are also very different from him at the same time. Aiko is an integral character in this story. She is so important to the development of Pun Pun and the narrative in general. Her contrast with Pun Pun is, oh my goodness. I didn't realize this until the end of the story, but it is so sublime to say the least. Now I'll touch more on this in the spoiler section because I don't really want to get too deep into things for the people who haven't read the story. Just go read it, man. I know a lot of people say it's pretty depressing. This is depressing for a reason. I think you're going to like it. Now the ending, quite honestly, may have been the best part. That's crazy because I've given so many compliments to this story already in this video, but deadass the ending might be the best part. No joke. One of my favorite panels ever is in chapter 143, which I won't show for spoiler's sake, but it's like four panels and and just that ah, ah i can't even put it to words as you can tell i mean i probably could put it into words but i'll be spoiling it definitely one of the best conclusions to any series i've seen the artwork i don't think i really even need to touch up upon the artwork by the panels you've probably seen in the video already some of the greatest spreads by far in any manga not necessarily because of the detail in the art which is obviously incredible but when compared to other series it's not as good as them i'm talking like the choreography and the style of these panels the way they're drawn out that's what makes them so special alongside the phenomenal artwork as well it just makes for some of the greatest panels and spreads ever to those of you who have somehow watched this far and you have not yet read goodnight pun pun you should definitely take your leave here as i'm going to get into spoilers for the remainder of the video it's already been a pretty long video so i appreciate if you did watch until this point but get the hell out of here because i do not want to have this masterpiece be spoiled for you. So, spoiler section time. Some of my favorite moments in this entire story, just for those of you who have read Goodnight Pun Pun, is the death of Pun Pun's mother. Very emotional moment. Aiko's death was... Oh, it was expected, but it was also unexpected. You know what I mean? The way they did it was so good. This panel right here when they were all children looking up at the shooting star. I mean, this is just iconic. This is my desktop wallpaper. This is... Dude, this is just incredible when i look back on this panel i get the beauty of this story in a single panel i don't think i even need to say any more about the panels man yuichi's backstory was an early masterpiece and i think the darkness of his life and what's happened to him was very well implemented into the story and i really did enjoy his character as well to be fair he was pretty useless after his backstory but i'm really happy for what happened to him towards the end and how he got to become a better person and get over his trauma. Early Pun Pun was phenomenal. From the first chapter to the last, this story was incredible. It's never like, oh, when does this pick up? Oh, when does it get better? No, it's incredible from the start to the end. It's sort of like a crescendo, however, it starts good, but it gets incredible towards the end. But regardless, there's no point in the story where I would really say it sucks. There are points that are kind of bland, like the good vibrations garbage. Listen, man, I mean, there's probably a hidden meaning behind this thing, but it was hella annoying, especially with the character designs. Now, the contrast between Aiko and Pun Pun. I have been foreshadowing this moment like Asano foreshadowed Aiko's death. Now, Pun Pun and Aiko both go through their mental struggles. They both go through trauma. They both put on personas and they both have that voice in their head talking to them, telling them that they are pieces of you know what. But there's a difference and we see that when Aiko dies. Aiko is, represents Pun Pun if he didn't have the people around him. And it shows the importance of people around you because Aiko did not have anyone really around her ever. Because of that, she truly did fall into despair and ended up taking her own life. Pun Pun came very close to doing this so many times and it shows the alternate pathway that Pun Pun could have taken but didn't because again he had people around him and he was slightly different than Aiko. The end where Pun Pun betrays Aiko just leaves her dead body there and goes to the people he knows 
He needs to be around. Oh, man. I, I kind of predicted it, but at the same time, the way they did it was incredible. And by the way, the panel I was talking about is the panel where Sachi and Pon Pon reunite. Absolutely astounding and sublime. No words for it, to be honest. Now, Good Night Pun Pun, in case you have not realized, is a top three series for me now. Um, I may have forgotten to add something to the video about the series that I love, but I think I've pretty much gotten most of my thoughts on the series out in this video. If you like these longer reviews, let me know. I'll probably do more of them once in a while because it does take me a while to read these manga. They do get pretty lengthy at times. But regardless, I am I'm so happy. I'm so thankful that I read Goodnight Pun Pun. It has changed my life without question. If you have not read it yet, it will change your life as well. I don't think I have anything more to add to this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and take care.